Thank you all for coming in. Thank you, Michael, for um, inviting me to speak. I, I, I will not be speaking um, for very long, but there are a few things I wanted to say. Michael asked me to speak because I'm a very passionate supporter of this museum. As a faculty member in the English department, I consider the Rose a sister discipline to poetry, to theater, to the arts. My students and I spend lots of time in the museum and time around the museum thinking about the museum and using it as a place to get away from other things on campus. This museum is one of several sacred spaces on this campus. We have several chapels that are explicitly designated as sacred, but I think everyone in this room and everyone who's read the petition will see that it's a sacred spot in many ways for many people in our community. So first of all, for our students, and I, since I'm the only faculty member speaking, I just want to say that this this uh, museum means a tremendous amount to our students, to our current students, to our past students, to our future students as well. It's somewhere that students learn. They not only learn about art making and admiring art, they learn about the institutions of museums, how museums work. Many of our students serve here as assistants uh, in different capacities. They watch us put up different kinds of shows. We see in miniature here what goes on in major large museums inside of cities, and it's a very impressive phenomenon that, that our students admire. You heard about several of our students who have gone on to hold very important jobs at other museums, but lots of them who are doctors and lawyers and journalists and mothers and bakers have also been touched by the museum, and this is very apparent when you read the Save the Rose petition. So first of all, I think we owe it to our students, who are our primary responsibility, to keep this museum open, alive, accessible as a museum, not as a space for them to make their own art, but for them to learn and admire art that has been made. I think the second thing that those of us on the faculty feel very strongly about is that we're incredibly proud of this museum, and it's one of the ways that we as a community feel that we give back, that we are cultural benefactors or protectors, and that we have something that no one else in Boston has. There was a letter, I think it was in yesterday's Wall Street Journal, which was forwarded to me, which I disagreed with, uh, that said, you know, why does Brandeis, the, the author had written a book about museums in New England, why does Brandeis need a museum? Tufts doesn't have a museum, you know, BC doesn't have a museum. It listed all the universities that don't have museums. I thought this was going about it exactly the wrong way. So the idea that other institutions don't have museums like ours is precisely why we're so proud why we have something that Harvard doesn't have, that Wellesley doesn't have, they have museums, but they don't have anything like the collection that we do. They have other things, um, but not what we have. So when I've been speaking in the last week to curators at the MFA and curators of contemporary art at Harvard, they're lamenting the loss. This is not a loss just for our students. This is not a loss just for our faculty. This is not a loss just for the administration. This is not a loss just for Brandeis. It's a real serious loss for the world of Boston, for greater Boston, for New England, for the country, for the world, and so on. But more to the point at home, there's nowhere else in New England to go where one can see these things. And I think this is something that we feel very proud of as faculty here, that we admire whenever we're recruiting new faculty members. This is always the first place I come. I always take anyone who's interested in Brandeis here, and I know that students say that they do this with their parents. In other words, when you arrive at Brandeis and you want to feel good about Brandeis, you come here. Around 40 years ago, um, President um, Sacker, one of our great presidents, um, said something about the Rose Collection that I want to read because it strikes me as very true and it strikes me as a kind of uh, leadership, a kind of articulation that we need to embrace now. Um, this was when uh, our collection was actually traveling. And I love the idea of our collection traveling and coming home. Uh, this is something that happened a lot in the past and I think needs to happen again to share and then to return back here. It belongs here. President Sacker said, quote, it's a matter of great satisfaction that the United States exhibition of the 9th San Paolo Biennale, so this is the Biennale being held uh, in San Paolo, it's a matter of great satisfaction that the United States exhibition at the 9th San Paolo Biennale should carry a Brandeis imprimatur. In the arts, where tomorrow is always as important as today, 
and where the young in aspiration and spirit are ever in the vanguard, perhaps, and I love his modesty, perhaps it is appropriate that Brandeis, not yet 20 years old, should help to lead. I think this idea of embracing Brandeis, this young university, as something that can look forward in the arts is one that we need to get behind. There's one other thing I just want to say about this collection, um, which I know many of you are familiar with, but from my perspective as a, as a literary historian, um, is, quite, is quite unique and certainly very interesting. This collection, the permanent collection, is nearly simultaneous with the university. And by that, actually, there are two ways in which that is correct. First of all, the paintings were never together. They never formed a community before this museum was built. In other words, we didn't inherit someone else's collection of art. And secondly, most of the paintings were painted in the larger sense in the period when the university was founded. So what we have here is a historical relic. I was trying to experiment with what the equivalent would be in my period, and I realized it would be that Harvard, which was founded in the 1630s, had a collection that consisted almost exclusively, let's say, of Vermeer and Rembrandt and Tiepolo and Poussin and so on. So what we have here is this historical gem, this incredible thing that the institution of Brandeis, the museum of Brandeis, the collection, meaning the community that the paintings share because they form a community together, and the paintings themselves all take us back to a moment in time, 300 years from now, when people look back at what I hope will still be the Rose Art Museum, they will have that same kind of shiver that I just had, and many of you might have had, when I named all of those amazing European painters who could be in the same place at Harvard. So I think it is our obligation, our cultural obligation, our institutional obligation, our personal obligation, to keep this museum alive. And I'm very, very, very hopeful that the enthusiasm that our entire world has been showing will help to reverse this decision. Thank you.